In this video, shared by Dr. Dmitro Goryachev from Lviv, Ukraine, we will discuss the surgical technique of 360-degree retinectomy. This is the case of a patient with chronic regmatogenous retinal detachment, where limited retinal mobility can be observed during core vitrectomy due to the presence of PVR. The surgeon performs a temporal retinotomy, and upon injection of perfluorocarbon, we observe the drainage of a dense, yellowish subretinal fluid, characteristic of chronic retinal detachment cases. Next, using forceps, areas of PVR are removed. However, due to the chronic nature of the condition and limited retinal mobility caused by anterior PVR in all four quadrants, the surgeon decides to perform a 360-degree retinectomy. To begin, endocautery is applied as peripherally as possible to preserve as much retinal tissue as possible. All retinal tissue anterior to the planned retinectomy is removed to avoid ischemic complications. Endodiathermy is essential to prevent bleeding during the retinectomy. A 360-degree retinectomy should be used as a last resort in complex retinal detachment cases, when it becomes clear that the retina cannot be reattached by other means. Radial relaxing incisions are then made using scissors to prevent tissue redundancy at the end of the procedure. These incisions are critical for overcoming the intrinsic stiffness of the retina in such cases and help reduce the risk of retinal foreshortening. At the end of the 360-degree retinectomy, we can observe that the retina becomes more mobile, making reattachment possible. Even with proper endodiathermy, bleeding may still occur during the retinectomy, resulting in clot formation. These clots must be carefully removed. Then, with the use of forceps, subretinal, and edge-associated PVR is also removed. The use of perfluorocarbon is crucial at this stage and should be added cautiously to create a single bubble and avoid displacement into the subretinal space. With the help of a finesse loop, the retina is stretched, eliminating any remaining retinal folds. Endolaser is then applied along the entire extent of the retinectomy, ensuring at least three rows of 360-degree laser. Finally, we observe an excellent anatomical outcome, and silicone oil is injected through a fluid-fluid exchange.